President Biden will be ringing in the new year in the sunny U.S. Virgin Islands with his family after taking off from D.C. last night. But what the White House is calling a quote unquote working trip comes as the border encounters reach unprecedented numbers. And Americans face the aftermath of the deadly winter storm. Joe Concha, author of Come On Man, joins us now. Joe, I love this. Oh, we're on a working trip yet. You look at his schedule, yeah. he has nothing scheduled. What's he working on, Joe? That's the thing. If he is working on something, the president puts out, Todd, a working schedule every day. It says exactly what happens from the morning uh, till the evening, and we, we see absolutely nothing. And, and look, very few people still would begrudge any president for taking a break during the holiday season. The problem with Mr. Biden is that seemingly every weekend is an extended holiday weekend. Delaware beaches, Nantucket, St. Croix, it doesn't matter. This is the R&R &R presidency. The, this president in Biden has visited Delaware on 60 weekends alone, and we're not even two years into this presidency. And, and, and you mentioned it before, given the horrific death toll that we're, that we're seeing in Buffalo, it's up to 33 people now. That's the worst we've seen there from a storm in 45 years. Given the thousands of people that you were reporting on this morning stranded at airports for, for days on end, this trip to the Virgin Islands looks tone deaf because it is, Ashley. Yeah, I mean, not only the storm, Joe, but inflation, crime, the border, all this mess with Title 42. Sure. Um, but my question to you is, does he have to report this? Because I know he took Air Force One down there, and this is on the taxpayer dime. So does he have to report the money spent? I would think so. If you're using anything that, that the government provides and facilitates, sure, uh, that, that that would have to happen. But it's just, you're right, there's so many things going on in this country right now uh, that, that the president, if I were advising him, I would say, look, at this moment, given Everything that people are going through may be a better idea for you to be engaged back at the White House, actually meeting with people that appears on a public schedule, or going to Buffalo to, to assess the damage, or going to the U.S. border to see the catastrophe that's there. That would have been seen as a president who shows that he cares. But time and again, we see that this president uh, simply likes to just get away for a couple days and acts like everything's a okay. The White House press office releasing this statement. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the Associated Press, one and the same. Uh, oh. just Justifying the president's relaxing holiday, saying Mr. Biden and his wife enjoy spending the week between Christmas and New Year's Day in a warmer climate. And Jill Biden likes a beach, comma, aides say. Two-parter here, Joe. You don't have to answer the first, but no. have you... I, I know Instagram influencers who don't go to the beach as much as the president and first lady. Second question, is anybody else in the media covering the fact that he's away while literally the country is falling apart? We haven't seen almost any coverage about that. I, I'm certain that if other presidents that have an R next to their name did the same thing, uh, you, you would be seeing the criticism, the outrage happening here. But yeah, the, the, this president certainly does uh, love the beach. Uh, as we mentioned before, it seems that whatever a vacation happens, and that's basically every weekend uh, from the White House, a, a beach is involved. That is true, Todd. Right. And Joe, we have to get to this. Disgraced crypto boss Sam Bankman Freed reportedly met with Michael Lewis, a top Hollywood writer who wrote the big short while he's on house arrest. So what kind of message does this send to the people who were scammed out of so much money that he is, I mean, it just makes him yeah. seem like the most unlikable guy ever and out of touch. Yeah, yeah, it makes Bernie Madoff almost look like, likable at this point, actually. Ever since this implosion of FTX came into the public eye, Sam Bankman-Fried appears like he doesn't have a care in the world, right? I mean, he went on a media tour. He drew laughs from one audience at the New York Times during that tour, laughing about this whole situation. Now he's meeting with Hollywood writers, as if all those people losing their life savings is worthy of a big Hollywood production with him in the starring role. Uh, Sam Bankman-Fried should be in jail right now, awaiting trial. There should 
have been no bail. Uh, and instead, he's living in an opulent home that his parents own in California while enjoying his freedom. I, I think a lot of people are probably disgusted by this because they should be. He seems to be getting special treatment when he deserves none. The law states that any proceeds you get from a movie off of your story and your story is illegality goes to help the people that you injured. Uh, let's see if he is unable to get the Democrats who, you know, paid off and got their votes to uh, to change the law. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Meantime, Whoopi Goldberg was forced to apologize again for offensive comments about the Holocaust. Goldberg telling the Sunday Times, my best friend said, not for nothing, is there no box on the census for the Jewish race? So that leads me to believe that we're probably not a race. This coming on the heels of this comment. Listen, Joe. Let's be truthful about it, because the Holocaust isn't about race. It's about man's inhumanity to man. She then tries to do a little cleanup. Uh, I don't know if it really worked. Is, is she... Here's her cleanup. It was never my intention to appear as if I was doubling down on hurtful comments. I believe that the Holocaust was about race, and I'm still sorry now, as I was then, that I upset, hurt, and angered people. Is she, though, Joe? Is she really sorry? Todd, it's almost as if Whoopi Goldberg is begging to get fired from this train wreck of an ABC News show at this point. I mean, why bring up the very comments that earned you a two-week suspension from The View earlier this year? And given all the insanely reckless things that we hear on that show on a daily basis that haven't resulted in suspensions, that's a tough place to ever be reprimanded for saying something so irresponsible and ignorant. Either way, I know that we're a long way from the movie Ghost, uh, that's for sure. <laughs> 33 years in 2020. 2023, in fact, Ashley. So uh, go watch it if you haven't. Uh, a great performance by the uh, late, great Patrick Swayze. And Demi Moore is actually very I good in I do like well. that movie in, like, just a couple of seconds. But how many chances are they going to give her with this? Because it's the same topic. I would think that you resuspend her. It's the fact that she keeps bringing it up, and she is doubling down on it if she's repeating it. You either suspend her or, or pull her aside and say, if you say this again, we're finding another moderator for the host. It's that simple. Joe, let's not forget about the starring role of Clay in Ghost. Not a person named Clay. I'm talking about Clay itself. It did amazing work. <laughs> As does Joe Concha. Always thank you, moldable. Joe. Joe, thank you very much. Have a great day.